Inside one of the clean rooms here at the Goddard Space Flight Center sits the Parker Solar Probe, an unmanned spacecraft that will travel through the sun's atmosphere. The Parker spacecraft, named famously for astrophysicist Eugene Parker, will go closer to the sun than any man-made object ever put in space. The more I study uh, the heliosphere, the more I study even near the sun environment where no human being lives, and I don't think anybody is planning to, uh, the more I find the glories of God that he designed it for us. For more than a decade, NASA scientist Adam Subbo has been working on the $1.6 billion Parker Solar Probe mission. He says he sees God's hand in the wonders of space, and even our existence here on Earth couldn't happen, Subbo says, without a divine creator. When I look at that, how much energy there is in the sun, all that energy is coming toward us, yet that energy is extremely dangerous if, it, if we were just exposed to it. Look at this uh, spacecraft. Just to fly by there, we had to take extreme protective measures just for uh, robotic stuff to survive, never mind human beings. Scientists say the probe about the size of a small car is equipped with a four and a half inch thick carbon heat shield. It will allow the craft to survive temperatures of 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, impacts by supersonic particles as it travels at speeds of 500,000 miles per hour, and make it able to endure powerful radiation as it circles the sun. During these encounters, the, space, the, the TPS has to face the sun all the time. We cannot afford large excursion. It will cause, cause problems. Just a degree. Yes. It will Tough. cause problems. Yes, and we don't want that. Data sent back to Earth will help scientists figure out why the sun's atmosphere, known as the corona, is hotter than the sun's surface. The sun, when you're on the surface, you're a balmy 10,000 degrees. You get out into the atmosphere, it's two to three million degrees. And it's unlike any other body in the solar system. Once the probe is launched from Earth in order to reach its correct orbit around the sun, it will fly around Venus seven times in order to slow down. It's expected to orbit the sun 24 times over the next seven years, edging closer on each pass. Six onboard instruments will also measure the sun's electric and magnetic fields, as well as its solar winds and other phenomena. Space weather may not sound like something that concerns us here on Earth, but scientists estimate solar events that happen without warning could cause trillions of dollars in damage in the U.S. And serious coronal mass ejection, or CME, could leave parts of the country without power for a year or more. The corona can, do, can throw us things at us that can harm us. Imagine one of these big CMEs or flares erupt on the sun and it's hurtling toward us to Earth. It can cause a lot of damage. Yes, we have a whole bunch of expectations and we lay out, laid out all the level one requirements and these are the questions we're going to answer. These are the measurements that we will do. And then we go there and then we invariably find that, oh, this is completely different. We have a completely new paradigm. So I'm looking forward to these unexpected discoveries that I can't even imagine yet. The launch window for the liftoff will take place between July 31st and August 19th. It will blast off inside of a Delta IV rocket from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Scientists say the hardest thing will be to say goodbye to it forever. Eric Rosales, CBN News.